Manusha Srikant and I am a product marketer. I'm a literature graduate, a small time published author and uh, I've been writing since I was nine. So yeah, here goes. So two poems, uh, one is pretty personal uh, and the other is a little political uh, based on, uh, you know, casteism if you will. It is a long queue without many people. Okay. It is a long queue without many people in the spaces between our line breaks and distances that help distinguish one from another. At the end of it is a liquor store that no one is ashamed of or perhaps everyone stopped caring a long time ago. The thick scent of rust stirs an urge to lick the balcony railing. The thick scent of rust stirs an urge to lick the balcony railing. Boredom makes you sleep a lot more and regret sleeping because of what Hamlet said, just that the poor guy had been very unsure. There are no favorite songs on the playlist. There are no favorite songs on the playlist because love is a bouncing castle or a trampoline you will never trust enough to climb on, but the feeling is beautiful. Like a conversation about sour salted mangoes in high winter when there are none. And so you continue to talk. From there, you wind up and down every alley, take every turn, get on a strange bus and go around the city without home or hope. What you have instead is a fright. And you fight it with all your worth and conclude that you aren't worth much because you lost. Taking tours around social media posts, you look at pictures and poems and lovely people holding flowers under the sun, their happiness making it look like a ball of light on a wish-granting dance floor. Everything around is a cue to write. Everything around is a cue to write. You walk away without looking straight till your legs refuse. All around there are people making wishes for time machines to go back to a time when everything made sense, making you count the times you do not want to go back to. Thank you. So that's one. It's titled The Well in My Backyard. So the well behind the house we sold was more than just a source of water. It was home to the tortoise who munched on what we broke off the tree and threw into it to see ripples. In autumn and every other month, it was the depository of the colorful leaves that jumped off the old jackfruit tree, a group of well-dressed, makeup-flaunting old ladies who went to, to a party to infinity to, stand, to attend each other's granddaughters' weddings at the end of time. During rains that followed summers where we could see the old ladies conversing with the tortoise priest clearly, it was a source of much wonder. As we exaggerated the rays of the water, felt it with our fingers, throwing in the bucket just to boast about how we could cup it with our bare hands. The well was where, when the motor was installed and the bore well dug with water running mixed with rock dust into the streets, our mothers had dreamt of growing fishes from their hometowns. When we all wished we could tell our fishes from the others, we sold the house to buy a pond each to name our fishes. The year when the city flooded over, the year when the city flooded over, our paper boats were replaced by wooden ones from the seashore, yet no one cupped it in their hands and wind blew away people to places and the electricity was gone. The well was where the neighbor who declined the festival food that our mothers passed around the street came to draw water standing by our gate without touching it. Waiting for one of us to open it for him, we were hysterical he brought his own rope and bucket. Thank you.